Levi Whitney here with Uphill Cinema. Today I just want to talk about what is and what isn't ProRes RAW. So this is gonna be a pretty short video. Um, I wrote down some notes and I also have some notes over here um, on my iPad because I wanted to make sure I got some points across. So I've been using it now for about three weeks and I absolutely love it. I got to play with it and use it before the official launch. And these are the questions that I've been getting asked a lot. So I wanted to go over what it is and some things that what it isn't. Um, so number one, what is ProRes RAW? It is a new acquisition codec. It's brand new. So just, I think people are trying to compare it to other RAW acquisition codecs. It's not, it's brand new. Um, I think Apple is absolutely amazing at coming out with this and working with video companies to come out with something to really push the industry forward. Uh, you know, ProRes came out in 2007, absolutely changed the game, that's the new standard, but a lot of us want even more uh, flexibility. We want more color depth, I know that's a big one for me, and um, you know, Apple ProRes uh, RAW is a 12-bit uh, for now. They're hopefully can just keep going higher and higher and higher. Um, but for now, it's a you know a 12-bit and it's up to 5.7K. So that's almost full frame, so 6K um, uh, acquisition. So it's new. So throw out other ideas, which brings me into what it isn't. Number two, ProRes RAW is not Red RAW. It is not Airy, Sony, Canon RAW. It's none of these RAWs. Like I said, it's a brand new acquisition, which means everything's new and everything's a little different. So I say that because a lot of people think it's going to be the same workflow as Red, specifically Red, and it's not. It's completely different. Um, and I think they compare it because the file sizes of Red are very similar to these types of file sizes. Um, red has a way of compressing it in just a way that you know you still get the color depth and the resolution but you don't have as big a file sizes well ProRes is doing ProRes RAW is doing the same thing it's packing it into a good package and letting your computer do all the uh, demosaicing and all of the unpacking of it and you still get all that color depth but you're not getting this insanely large file another reason i bring that up is a lot of people are like well red has all their information all of this raw metadata information in my nle in final cut and premiere you pull it all up and you can change it all remember this is new and it's different this is apple's way of doing it and so a way that I've explained it to people is it's kind of like using in the photography world a JPEG versus RAW. Now the workflow is exactly the same but you can only push a JPEG to a certain amount before it just falls apart. The noise in a JPEG is just you know way different. The color depth is terrible um, but the workflow of a RAW and JPEG is exactly the same, but you put the RAW, you shoot the, the photo in RAW and you can push it a ton more. The noise is a lot better controlled. The shadows are way better. It's just a better image because you can push it so much more, but the workflow is exactly the same. In my experience with ProRes RAW in the last couple of weeks, that's what I've noticed is I have a lot of latitude, a lot more latitude. Um, I've really damaged some images on purpose and then brought them back. And it's, <laughs> it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Now with that said, you do in Final Cut, you do get your raw image though. You go into, you pull up the clip, you go into the inspector, you change it to your clip inspector, you change it out of general into settings, and you'll see it has that raw information. Um, you know, it has to convert that image. It, by default, it converts the image to a, a rec to a, uh, a rec from whatever log you have. But you turn those things off and boom, you'll see the raw image 
come up instantly and you can then convert it to log because log a lot of misconceptions that people have is they think log is raw that is not true um, so you have you have a setting in there where it converts the raw image to log and then you can go and put your LUTs on it from there or you can just start with raw and what you see is what you get and just start tweaking from there. One of the reasons why I love it so much is because it doesn't have all of those things. It's a new way of doing it. It doesn't have all those settings. I can just go into my color grading and push the image wherever I want and it's absolutely amazing and I love 12-bit. If you've ever worked with me or seen videos, I think a lot of magic happens when you have a 12-bit image. Number three of what Pro Ezra is is remember it's new. <laughs> I can't iterate that enough. It's a new way. Um, I, a lot of people, like I said, are trying to compare it to other raw codecs of Sony raw, Airy raw, Canon raw. Nope, it's new. So number four of what ProRes raw is, is it's easy. So for the person that loves raw, it is absolutely awesome. In the future, I'm going to have a bunch of you know skin tone um, examples and and uh, the differences between 8-bit, 10-bit, and 12-bit, um, things like that. So I wanted to make sure you guys knew that. Um, one thing is too is let me know if you want me to do a video of actually what is raw and what isn't. Some people get really confused on what raw is and they think just because it has raw on it, it's amazing. Um, all raws are different because in a nutshell, the conversations I had at NAB and on the floors with people, this is probably like a three to one compression and that's actually like amazing. So uh, I'm really excited about this. Feel free to ask me more questions. I'll make sure to get a video up and answer um, as many questions as I can. So hopefully that's a good little description of what and what isn't ProRes Raw. I appreciate the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram, it's Uphill Cinema. And uh, like I said, yeah, I'll answer any questions I can for you. Thanks guys, bye.